Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Sports Writers Podcast. I'm large school beat writer here at the Journal Star, Aaron Ferguson, and to mm-hmm. my left is the small school football beat writer, Stan Morris. How you doing, Stan? Doing all right. How about you? Oh, we're going. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going. We're grinding. Yeah, we we're are. on to the quarterfinals. Uh, yeah. Just five teams, four games. That's all we've got. Mm-hmm. Right. Bring your uh, parka for an... For Saturday too, right? Yeah, fortunately, a little chilly one. This Saturday. Fortunately, it looks like it's going to stay dry though. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. I was looking at for. Uh, I'll be going to Forreston, taking a little road trip up north to, to see Princeville play Forreston, and what is it, 37 degrees for a high, and that's a 4:30 kick. So it'll be in the 30s, and walking those sidelines, it'll be a little chilly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. F- that's that's the way it is this time of year, right? For it's football those guys, way. that's what yeah. they all say, right? And I'm sure Daryl Crouch, football weather. Crouch will still be wearing He'll be shorts. in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the, the Princeville Forreston game. You're uh, making the trip up there. What what do you think is going to happen? What what do you know? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, Princeville can't be playing with more confidence right now. I mean, they're going into it uh, just even when I, I talked to, you know, Coach Carruthers uh, uh, for my – notes on, on Wednesday you know they were just the kids were just like come on bring bring it on we're ready we're ready to, even though Forreston's a defending state champ you know Forreston's like one of the powers in in 1A football but uh you know Princeville really comes in with a head of steam a uh, couple overtime wins I mean they've been barely getting it done but they've been getting it done they've been playing some great defense you know so if, if anything's going to help you get to that point farther it's it's having a great defense and, and they do have a very good defense. Though Forreston has a really good defense as well, so that's um, it's going to be another good defensive battle, just like uh, Princeville and Anawan Weathersfield was. That was one of the best games I've I've seen all year uh, with them going back and forth and uh, just some great defense going on. And I'm going, going to see that probably this Saturday at Forreston. And Forreston's this, this is a game where I mean it's a 4:30 kick, which is uh, you know I wish it was a little earlier in the day. <laughs> it's going to be in the dark by the time it's done, but it 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 may take less than two hours because these guys pretty much all both run. I mean, Forreston's, I think they've completed 13 passes all year, and and Princeville's similar. They haven't thrown that many passes this year either, so that's going to be you know who can stop the other team, who whose defensive line and and backers can stop the other team from from getting you know long possessions and and that kind of thing. So um, I I see it being a, a pretty good game, a, a close game. I mean, they have a common opponent for them is Dakota. Uh, three weeks that week three, Forrest and beat Dakota forty to nothing. That's week three, <laughs> um, and then Dakota uh, Princeville beat Dakota in the first round of the playoffs, twenty seven twenty four in, in overtime, but at their place. Uh, Forreston won against Dakota at, at Forreston. So, um, and, you know, week three to week uh, 11 is a big difference. So who knows? You know, I'm, again, saying that, you know, Princeville coming in, confidence, good running back, good good running game, uh, that kind of thing. So that should be fun. Uh, I know they're looking forward to that. And they haven't been in this p- position for 32 years, you know, 85 was the last time that, that they made it in, into the quarters, and they've never made it into the semifinals. So they've got history uh, to try to make here. Forreston's a team that won state last year, won it um, in 2014, I think, also. So, yeah, they've, they've got their uh, work cut out for them, but, uh, you know, you never know this time of year, too. So. Yeah, uh, I'll be at Richwoods in Washington, at least. That's the game I'm covering. I'll, I might... You know, drive over to Dunlap after the game, and it's just a, you, you know, be able to, the way while writing my work story. Out. <laughs> and, but you know, it's a, it's a kind of a little different. You got two both pretty historic football programs. They both have thirty. Well, Richwoods has thirty, and Washington has thirty-one playoff appearances since uh, mm-hmm. what seventy seventy-three or seventy-four. And mm-hmm. uh, Washington, Washington under Coach Crouch is going to the quarters for their third straight year and seventh and eleven and. Uh, you know, it really wasn't that long ago that Richwoods was in the quarterfinals. I think that was, what, 2011, 2012? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. But, you know, it, w- it wasn't that long ago. But after missing the last two years, you know, it's it's good for them to get back. They've kind of they've kind of caught fire a little bit. Washington caught mm-hmm. fire after uh, their last loss was the Dunlap 28-14 back in week five or six. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. That was a while ago. Yeah. It seems like it was <laughs> yeah. so long ago at least. Uh-huh. Um, 
Washington's defense has been just quite remarkable all year. They've, uh, I don't think they've given up more than 28 points in a single game. They're averaging 16 a lot for the for per game for the season. Rich Woods is, uh, you know, coming in defensively. They're only giving up, I think, 22, 21 or 22 in their past uh, six games, five or six games since since they played Bloomington uh, in Week Seven. So, uh, you know, Rich Woods has turned their defense around. They flipped some guys, made some personnel changes to flip some guys going both ways, and allowed them to shift some guys around. And uh, you know, Joe Jackson's playing well at safety. Uh, they put Sherrod Danage and Keaton Street Matter in the defensive backfield. Um, so, so they've got some dudes, you know, going both ways. To knowledge Hall, who just set the state rushing record in a single playoff game, uh, which I still am not really. I'm. I, it's kind of weird because Ty Isaac, for Julia Catholic, ran for five fifteen in a title game, but the, like mm. t- title game and playoff game are separate. You know, uh, separate. Uh, Class, title, title classifications, game has its own set yeah. of records, which yeah. I don't understand because it's during <laughs> yeah. the playoffs. But very cool. I mean, <laughs> the fact that he carried the ball forty-eight times and and was able to just mm-hmm. you know break some long runs even at the end of the game and and really kind of just sealed it. Yeah, yeah lead Richwoods to the win. Uh, that that fourth and three call on their own twenty-two, going mm-hmm. for it, and it's a uh, uh, seventy-eight yard touchdown run was, yeah. you know. Not, not only a gutsy call, but I don't think anyone predicted that, you know, <laughs> a, a long touchdown run out of that. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's going to be the focus for Washington, stopping Hall. He kind of mm-hmm. sets up their offense because he can get those four, five, six-yard carries on first or second down, and uh, that's how they can move the ball. You know, occasionally it opens up, you know, a longer run, but it also opens up the passing game because you get, you know, all those – backers and, and even the secondary starting to creep into the box a little bit more but Richwoods can spread you out and throw the ball too uh get it out to a you know physical p- possession receiver like Sherrod Danage or a speedy guy like AJ Johnson and they're playing really well they've played really well they turned it on uh you know they had to win some games late in the season just to make the playoffs and here they are in quarterfinal Saturday and uh you know Washington's just kind of been chugging along it just seems like they they found their identity. They're, you know, lining up in the wishbone and just shoving it down your throat, right down the field. Um, and so they're they're playing really well, and I think it's, you know, just going to set up for a fantastic game Saturday at Indra's Field. Yeah, that'd be a fun game to go to. You know, if, you could, if I could go see that one and then take the road trip, but uh, you know, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't quite work out that way. But yeah, and it's cool again to see, you know, uh, as Roland would say, a, mi- a mid-state school against right. a. A middle line high school, which is very cool. So yeah. that's at two o'clock at Interest Field at Richwood. So if you uh looking for something to do on Saturday and are feeling like you can brave the cold, that's where mm-hmm. I'll be. So you can come brave the cold with me. Yeah. <laughs> and you you uh you have El Paso is also this weekend. El Paso Gridley is still alive, yeah. Yeah, they've been pulling off the upsets in the last few weeks. You know, they were two and four six weeks into the season, so they've really been coming on. Lately, they they play Gibson City, Melbourne, Sibley, which has been just a machine all year. GCMS is uh, they're eleven and zero. They've uh, they've been just handling uh, people all season long. In fact, they have a win earlier in the season against El Paso Gridley, week three. They beat them forty five to to eighteen. But it's a it's a different time now, and, and uh, El Paso Gridley's playing a whole lot better than they were in, in week three. And you know, they've um, started to. Uh, Coach Rigsby was, you know, he wasn't even sure exactly what to say about how the how the you know they've changed things around a little bit, um, and winning five in a row and uh, backs against the wall from week six. Uh, but they changed some things uh, defensively, and uh, they also kind of changed their offense to to be fit more of their personnel and um, what they do. And they've been kind of featuring Ryan Folk. Um, you know, they're running back who's almost got 1,600 yards rushing. And, um, you know, they've been playing great de- team defense. Uh, this past weekend, they, they beat a, a Knoxville team, which was steamrolling everybody in the last eight weeks, too. And uh, they get a uh, – Falk was able to block a block a punt with like six minutes left to go in a the game. They score uh, the, the go-ahead touchdown there with like three or so 
minutes left to go in the game to to be able to advance to, to a spot where they definitely, I mean, as a consolidation, they were 0 and 7 in playoffs going in mm-hmm. to this year. So then they've um, won two in a row and you know gotten themselves into the quarterfinals and and yeah, you'd say they're they're a big underdog, but they've been a big underdog the last couple of weeks too, and, and been able to come out on top and. Uh, uh, last year, it was, the roles were kind of reversed. Gibson City, um, uh, El Paso Gridley beat Gibson City in the regular season, but Gibson City beat El Paso Gridley in the playoffs uh, to go on. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, I, GCMS has just been playing unbelievable, really strong running game. Um, you know, they've got a quarterback that can throw it that's uh, thrown for 13 touchdowns. Uh, Mitch McNutt is their running back, who's who's their lead guy, 1,300 yards, 27 touchdowns. Um, again, come down to those who can stop who uh, in, the, in the running game. So, uh, But they got a shot. El Paso Gridley has <laughs> got a shot to move on. If you're still playing, you still have a shot, right? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you, you know, once you get eliminated, that shot's going That's gone, right. But, you know. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, um, Dunlap plays a home game at four. They're uh, third straight home playoff game this year which is kind of remarkable uh Mm -hmm. coming to the third round of the playoffs and uh you know it's it's really exciting they're they're undefeated uh most most wins in program history they're in the Mm -hmm. quarterfinals for the second time as we kind of figured out here later this week um Mm -hmm. the 1981 team went to the quarterfinals when there were only four playoff games if you got to state Whereas mm-hmm. now there's five playoff games that switched in 1985. So sorry for that mm-hmm. mix up last week. Um, it's all my fault. Kind of the young guy that doesn't, you know, I'm still <laughs> learning the HSA history, I guess, you know. Um, but yeah, still extremely exciting times in Dunlap. Uh, mm-hmm. You can head over from Richwoods to Dunlap, you know, pretty easily, pretty quickly if you want to go from the two kick, two o'clock kick to the four o'clock kick. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's what I'm going to do, you know, go write my. Game story from Dunlap, from Dunlap's press box. Um, yeah. But they've got a tough test. Country Club Hills, uh, Hillcrest, which is right next to Tenley Park. Um, they beat Peoria High 31-12 in, in the first week of the playoffs, and uh, I think they've kind of proven that their defense is legit. They're only averaging like 10 points per game allowed, 10 or 11 points per game allowed uh, all season, which is really quite remarkable. They play in a mm-hmm. pretty solid conference. Uh, Tenley Park, which Washington beats in that conference, um so yeah i mean it's gonna be tough uh both both teams have scored a ton of points but they um you know dunlap's actually coming off a season low of 28 points last week against a a really good rich central team that was really physical and uh like they feel prepared to to see another physical football team that has a lot of speed um hillcrest they they run more out of a spread formation um but but they're pretty balanced overall offensively. They run the ball a lot. They throw the ball. Their quarterback has a strong arm. He can, you know, fire downfield a 30- to 40-yard pass if he needs to. Yeah, didn't um, he have, like, five touchdown passes against uh, Peoria High? Yeah, uh, in yeah. Round one. So, I mean, <laughs> they're – they have – both teams have weapons. Uh, Dunlop's mm-hmm. passing a game's going to have to improve a little bit. I know uh, the quarterback, Miles Burke, and some of his receivers stayed after practice last night while I was out there. Um, you know, working on routes and throwing footballs. So, um, you know, both teams are putting the work in. I think it's going to be a hard-hitting, physical, low-scoring game. I think the team that can generate the most turnovers and, uh, you know, really dominate the line of scrimmage, especially especially if Dunlap can, you know, get their two ends, Ryan Erickson and Josiah Muman, to get pressure into the backfield on passing attempts and then, you know, keep the quarterback in the pocket uh, and and just have the pocket collapse. I think they've they've got a really good shot to take away the passing game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, usually those uh, point totals go down a little bit as you get deeper into playoffs, right? Uh, unless you're Peoria High last year, and yeah, you know, it seemed keeps, like it was going. Keep, up. <laughs> yeah, but usually when you get to this, <laughs> this level, the defenses just get better and better, and you're you're looking at those twenty point, you know, twenty to twenty twenty one twenty type games or whatever. So. You don't get the 60s to 50s. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a fun weekend. I yeah. guess there's only four games to pick, so uh, right. who who are you picking? Right. Your four winners. I'm not telling you. Yeah. Oh, man, it's a <laughs> secret, huh? He's mad because I picked up yeah, a couple no, on I the pick-em chart. <laughs> Gaining on me. 
I'm getting scary. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do we want to start with? You know, uh, my, my side, uh, yeah, small sure. schools. Uh, yeah, we got uh, Princeville at Forreston. Um, you know, uh, I do think you know, Principal has uh, a strong enough uh, defense and playing with enough confidence to, to give Forreston a good run, but I'm not sure that they can. I mean, that they're going into a tough environment there and – and again, with a program that that is just uh, on on top right now. Uh, but uh, so I'd see Forreston coming away with a win there, but maybe only by a touchdown. So that's that's where I'll go on that one for now. Yeah, it's probably going to be a low-scoring game. You know, yeah, I, would I think. think another twenty-one fourteen type thing or something like that. Twenty-one twenty. Twenty-one twenty. Yeah, you know, I was time. so close last were, week to picking that score. <laughs> right. Almost I, right on the money. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, Forreston's just there's just something about you know having the confidence of being there and 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 being there consecutively that I think is going to play to their advantage. And they're at home, um, mm-hmm. so I think you know I think it it will be a close game. Mm-hmm. It should be a good game, I would hope. But yeah. I'm going to go with Forreston. Mm-hmm. El Paso Gridley, GCMS. Um, again, I mean, you can't be on as good a roll almost as, as EPG is right right now. And, and again, another confidence-building thing. But uh, GCMS has, has just been, like I said, it, 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 they've just been rolling this mm-hmm. year. They've been very highly ranked all, all season long. And and I I would be surprised, really, if El Paso Gridley could – could get away there with a win, but uh, it'll be closer than that forty-five to eighteen that was in, <laughs> yeah. in week three. I, I think it's going to be, you know, maybe um, within single digits. We'll, we'll see, but uh, I, I see GCMS kind of coming away with a win there. Yeah, GCMS has looked great, you know, all mm-hmm. year. And uh, mm-hmm. not that I deal with the small schools a ton, but you know, with the pickums chart, you know, I'm looking at you know common opponents, who teams beat, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, margins of victory, and they they just seem to be you know flat out dominant. But it should be a much better game than it was the first time around. It seems like El Paso Grizzlies you know figured some things out and and mm-hmm. has really been able to turn their season around and make a great run. But I I think it's going to be tough to win against mm-hmm. uh, GCMS, who's just been just been rolling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we could flip over to my side since that's all we have left. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll go with Dunlap and uh, Hillcrest. You know, it's a uh, it's going to be an interesting game because I think Hillcrest, you know, they have several guys that will run the football. They've got a quarterback that can scramble if need be. Uh, he has a super strong arm. They really have two receivers that are that are pretty talented. They they caught, I think, almost two thirds or three quarters of the passes thrown this mm-hmm. this uh, this year and have seventeen of the twenty four touchdowns in the regular season. So. You know, it's a di- as dynamic an offense as Dunlap has seen, but after playing a Rich Central team that was, you know, every bit as athletic, if not more, had Rich Central definitely had more Division One kids. Uh, not not to take away from Hillcrest or anything, but uh, just the level of talent, the level of IQ, and the way that they played. Uh, you know, the seats are kind of seating's kind of overrated once you get to the playoffs. It's all about mm-hmm. matchups, so. I think that's going to benefit Dunlap. I think they're they're going to come in rested. They're as confident as ever, uh, winning 13, 14 of the last 15, uh, dating back to last season. And I think I think Dunlap will win a close one possession game. Yeah, I'm going to go with Dunlap too. I just, I just think that they can, um, you know, they have the weapons, you know, on on both sides of the ball really to 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 stop the. Stop a Hillcrest team that certainly can score some points, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with Dunlap. I just got to keep going with those Eagles, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had definitely. quite a year with the, with the uh, girls cross country team winning the state title, and then just kind of rolling, rolling through the season. So, yeah, I'll go Dunlap. And you know, if Dunlap wins, at least I know where I'll be two weeks from Saturday. You will definitely be in the state title game because yeah. Dunlap will play either Richwoods or Washington. The right. the the two p.m. game on Saturday. Um, again, just, all area semi would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? It would be, and yeah. it would be really cool. You know, yeah. both Richwoods and Washington have been to a semi. Dunlap never has. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be awesome to see. I think 
Oh, uh, let's see. Washington and Richwoods that you know they have played. The last time was August thirty first, two thousand twelve, and Washington won at Richwoods twenty four fourteen. Mm. That was over five years ago. So right. none of uh, those kids have been around. Were no. around. Yeah. Maybe some of the younger brothers were ball boys or something. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. I, it's going to be interesting because Richwoods is, or excuse me, Washington is lined up in the wishbone and just handed the ball off to kind of negate some speed from mm-hmm. from Decatur MacArthur and Tenley Park, and and no one has stopped it yet. So I, d- I don't see them going away from it too much uh, unless Richwoods forces them to make adjustments um, by stopping the run with Sam Walter, Josh Schellenberg. Uh, Caleb Fisher can run it as well. Brendan Durr, the fullback. Um, but Caleb Fisher can throw it. He can throw it. He's got – they feel like they have – you know, four or five receivers that can that can be reliable targets for him if they do have to throw it, uh, whether that's in a two minute situation or not. They uh, mm-hmm. Richwoods, on the other hand, they can throw the ball. Uh, they mm-hmm. will throw the ball at any time with their physical threat. Get some speedy receivers in there, um, but they're going to look to Tenalich Hall to get on those four or five yard gains, kind of stay ahead of the chains and and get them in. You know, second and five second and six third and two type situations so that they can mm-hmm. maybe take a shot if they have to and then go for it on fourth down they just they have so much confidence in that offense that that i think that's really the the key to watch between richwood's offense and washington's defense so um i don't know i think right now i'm gonna go with washington uh just the way they've been playing no one's no one has stopped their rushing attack, and they've been very physical up front with the offensive line, which I think they have a slight edge over Richwoods, the O-line versus the D-line. Hmm. Well, I've gone with against Richwoods the last two weeks and uh, <laughs> backfired on me. <laughs> Gave them a little bit of motivation or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so they have they keep keep going. Um, good for them. It's exciting. To, I'm a Richwoods grad, so I got that a little bit. <laughs> So, but uh, um, so you got to go with the alma mater, the alma mater right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, now probably team the Richwoods faithful probably don't want me to pick again. <laughs> pick them now. <laughs> now. The last couple of weeks I picked them and then they haven't. So um, I, I'm actually leaning probably towards Washington just with the defense that they have and just uh, being able to uh, you know to stop that. It's interesting that you know they have the both of them have. The, the passing abilities, but they've been kind of relying on their running games here lately. But, uh, you know, I, I just see Washington's defense maybe being uh, a determining factor in this one. So as of now, I'll go with Washington, but, you know, who knows? It'll be fun. <laughs> It'll be a fun weekend of football, a fun Saturday of football. Yeah. Uh, hope to see it at Indris Field at 2 p.m. and – uh, Eagle Field. Whenever I get there, uh, mm-hmm. you get there at four or, or earlier. You know, make sure you got a good seat. Yeah, that parking places. might want to get there early. Yeah, so that'll be a fun one, and uh, you could see stand up on the road or follow along on Twitter or something. <laughs> right, taking that long road trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. So thanks to our producer Matt Dayhoff once again for uh, producing this podcast for us. Um, please subscribe to the Journal Star. You can go to pjstar.com backslash subscribe. There's a big red button on the homepage. Um, if you subscribe to the print edition, you get the online edition for free. So, uh, you know, you get double the fun, double the stories, I guess, that way. You know, if you're traveling and can't get the paper, you can still read online for free. So uh, I know some people were planning some winter getaways around Martin Luther King Day mm-hmm. and, and and whatnot. So you can still read if you're afar. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stan, thanks for uh, doing this once again, and Matt, behind the scenes back there, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good luck to all our quarterfinal teams. Absolutely.